Hey y'all, welcome to the 10th videos of the particle system series. So this is actually the video number 5 since we started using the transform feedback. And in this video, we are going to see how to link the size of the particles to their mass. So the bigger mass they're gonna have, the bigger the particle is going to be. And then we are also going to see how to clamp the velocity because there is actually a problem with our velocity. So let's check this out. As you can see, I left the patch running here for a while and the particles after a while are going crazy. They are going super fast. And that's because if we look at our code, the acceleration is augmenting at every frame. And um, when the particles hit the borders of this imaginary cube that we created, they're just going to come back from the other side. So this actually makes the velocity of those particles always increase without anything to stop it, okay? So we could stop this in several ways. We could, for example, um, sum the acceleration to the velocity from the previous frame multiplied by uh, something less than uh, one, which will make them uh, then go very slow. For example, something like that. Uh, exactly, so instead of summing it to the computer complete previous velocity of the frame before it just sums it to the velocity multiplied by a number smaller than one so the velocity is never going to augment indefinitely it's always going to be kind of dumped at every frame great and then we got another way of uh, stopping the particles from accelerating indefinitely which is to clamp the output velocity uh, in order that uh, it never goes beyond a certain certain values so let's implement this second method and we will do it like this so we are in our transfer feedback shader as we left it last time let me actually delete those comments that we had since last time and great so we are here before the end of the main function we got here our output velocity which is in the result of the input velocity plus the acceleration for this frame and then go like let's go like this let's say o velocity it's equal to clamp, which is a GLSL function, is exactly the same as clip inside gen. So it will just clip this vector until certain values. So O velocity, and then we have to clamp it, it for uh, vector three. So let's say minus vector three, let's actually create a variable. So vector three max velocity. And let's create a vector 3 of, uh, for example, 0 0.2. Uh, so this is the max step the particles can do at every frame. All right. So we can clip this by uh, minus max well, because the velocity can also be a vector that goes on the negative axis. So minus max well and max well. Great. Now that we clamped it, the velocity, the particles are never going to accelerate indefinitely. Let me try to make the gravity like super big. And let's see what happens. Okay, so they're still going pretty fast. Let's actually make it uh, the max velocity a bit smaller. Let's say 0 0.05. Let's try even smaller, 0 0.01. Okay, great. So this is now the maximum velocity at which the particles can move. Let's make it a bit bigger. Yeah, this seems about right. Let's go back with our gravity to where it was. And let's restart the transfer feedback. Okay, so I'm always starting the transfer feedback with my spacebar since we connected it to the to the key 32, which is the spacebar. So now it's working. Let's make the gravitational attraction from the center a bit bigger. Great. Good. Okay, so this is where we are right now. We fixed the problem with the velocity. Now we can go on with the second part of this video, which is basically to assign the mass of these particles to their size. So we will need to do it like this. We have our transfer feedback shader, uh, which basically is just responsible to set the attributes for the vertices of the GGL mesh. So it sets some properties for the vertices of the GGL mesh, like the position, the color, the normals, and so on. It fills those buffers of the GGL mesh, vertex attribute, Right, then we can read those buffers inside another shader, which is actually connected to the GGL mesh. And this, I'm going to call it render shader, because it's just responsible to um, actually render those vertices. Well, actually, we could also still modify the vertex position inside the shader, but for the moment we are just using it to change the appearance of the final particles. So we are not going to touch the vertices, we are just going to change the appearance 
of the particles. So this shader gets the data from the buffers that are filled by the transform feedback shader. So that's how it works. Transform feedback feeds, uh, fills the buffers of the GGL mesh, those ones here, and then those buffers are read from the render shader. So let's give it a try. What we need to do is to create another GGL shader object. So let's put this one here and let's create another one. So GGL shader. And well, this is going to render to our TF particles context. And let's give it a file name and let's call it render particles shader.jxs. Let's put the shaders down here. And let's give it also a name. So name, let's call it render capital R shader. Great. Let's make it the same size as the other object. Let's give it a color. Good. So this is now the default shader that comes when we create uh, a new GGL shader object. And uh, we will not use this. Let's do like this. Let's check the, what is the actual shader that the GGL mesh is using at the moment with the message get GL3 shader. So in GL3, you have to think that everything is rendered through a shader. This is different from GL2. In GL3, everything is rendered through a shader. There is no fixed pipeline like in GL2. So every object has by default a shader attached. So this is the shader attached to the GGL uh, mesh object. We can get it with the get GL3 shader. So I'm going to save this shader actually. Save as. Then I'm putting it in the, in the same folder as uh, where our patch is. And I'm going to give it a name. Uh, so the same name that we chose for the shader. Which was, uh, let me check, uh, we called it render particles shader. So render particles shader dot jxs. So I don't want to save it as a text file, just as a jxs. Great. Good. And now let me refresh that. Oh, I think actually that this file doesn't let me save it. So I'm going to do like this. I'm going to copy it and then go inside our shader here. Just delete everything that is inside the shader, past it, and then save this one. So, and we say this is called render particles shader. Okay, great. So I'm going to open this shader inside Visual Studio Code because it's much uh, nicer. Great, I'm going to give it the type of the code, this is GLSL. Great, so let's see what we got. Jitter shader name, fill flat point circle. Okay, description doesn't, we don't care about it. And then we got our parameters as input, which is simply the position, the model view projection matrix and the color. And then we bind those parameters. It's exactly like the transform feedback shader until now. And then we got the, our vertex shader. So this is the vertex shader. We see that we use the model view projection matrix as a uniform, and then we get some inputs, which are actually inputs from the buffers that we feel in the transfer feedback shader. So this position is the position that we feel uh, from the transfer feedback shader when we write to O position, to our buffer of type position. Great, and then we have an output struct that we can use to send uh, uh, variables to the fragment shader. Then we have a main function, which we are going to modify in a second. Let me put a bit of order in this. And then we got the fragment shader. So, great. Then the fragment shader is just responsible of drawing the points as circles. If we would uh, comment this out and then actually attach this shader to our GGL mesh. So let's go like this and say shader render. So we attach our render shader to the GGL mesh, to render shader, great. Since I commented this line, now the particles are going to appear as little squares. If I uncomment this line, then the particles appear as dots. Great, then we can see how we can make them look awesome in the next videos. So now we just want to make them have a different size according to their mass. So if we go in our patch, we can see that we are using a um, texture attached to the GGL transfer feedback. We did it in the last uh, video. And we are filling this texture with random numbers. And we are using one of these random numbers as the mass. Basically the first component, the first plane of this texture we are using at the as the mass. Now we need a way to pass these values to the uh, render shader. So we need to fill those in one of our buffers in order to be able to read them in the render shader. 
So uh, we could do it like this. We could actually fill. Um, we could create another plane on the velocity buffer. So we can say that this is a four plane buffer. So first we need to change this three into a four. So we just create um, a four plane matrix instead of a three one. Then we go inside our transform feedback shader and we change i velocity to be of type vector four. This should work. Normal is actually a, a buffer that usually contains three values, but I'm sure it can actually accommodate also a fourth value. Let's see if this actually works. And then inside our shader, we need to change also the type of that. So in back four velocity, out back four velocity. Great. And now we also have to be careful because every time we use the velocity in our shader, it's actually going to be a vector four now, not anymore a vector three. So we have to do something like that. We are using it. Uh, let me check when we actually using it. Uh, so basically only here. Exactly, basically only here. So we can do like that. Let's create a vector four because we have to fill uh, output velocity as a vector four. So this is going to be uh, input velocity dot x is on zeta plus acceleration. And then we need a four component for this, which is actually going to be our mass. Exactly, because we need, we are doing all this thing to have a way to pass uh, our mass uh, uh, to the render shader. Okay, great. So I think we got an error. Let's see what uh, uh, what it has to complain about. Implicit cast from back 4 to back 3. Um, let me check. Oh yeah, because we are using it also here, the output velocity, which is actually now a vector 4. So let's actually do it like this. O velocity dot y on zeta is uh, equal to clamp o velocity dot x y z and so on so we are just changing this the first three components of the output velocity we are not changing the fourth one which is still set to the mass good let's see if this actually works again uh, now there is still an error implicit cast from back four to back three. Oh, here we also have to say o position is equal to o velocity dot x y z and uh, let's see if this was actually it. Uh, yeah, exactly. So now the, all the requirements are fulfilled because we are always using O velocity as a vector three when we were using it before, but it is actually a vector four and the four component is actually our mass. Great. Now, if we go in the render shader, we can actually access our normal buffer. So let's do like this. Let's copy this parameter and let's call it TF uh, velocity. So we know that it actually comes from the transfer feedback is of type vec4 and the state is normal because in the transform feedback we were using the velocity as the normal buffer so we were using the normal buffer as our velocity basically so we can use it also in the render shader in the same way so type normal state normal exactly so let's bind it then to the vertex program we need to bind it to the vertex program and it's going to be our new input so in vec4 tf velocity let's actually make the b cups because i can like it more great and uh, good so basically now we can change the size of our particles by using the built-in uh, right variable point gl point size okay this is a built-in variable we don't have to write it ourselves we can write it ourselves, but uh, automatically is automatically written by default. It's basically the point size attribute of the GGL mesh, and we can change it also from between the from inside the, the vertex shader. So let's set it to equal to tf velocity dot w. So the fourth component of our normal buffer. So let's see if this is actually working. Okay, it's not working because. We need to change the point mode of the of the ggl mesh object i think so if we go in the attributes of the ggl mesh there is an attribute called point mode and we need to change it to user shader exactly so now it's going to use our shader defined size of the, for the particles so let's add code it point mode user shader Great, so as you can see now, all the particles have a different size, which is actually related to their mass. So the particles that have bigger mass are going actually to go slower, because uh, we are dividing the forces by the mass, remember? And the particles that have smaller mass, so they are actually small, are going to go faster. 
Let's actually change a couple of uh, things in the transfer feedback shader now. I just want to change a bit uh, the, the gravity force, make it a bit bigger, so we can see our particles also being attracted to the floor exactly. Great. So we can see that actually uh, bigger particles are slower to to fall because they have a bigger a bigger mass. As we saw, this we this is not exactly how gravity works in the real world. We have uh, how gravity works in the real world for the attractor here in the center. And uh, let's actually visualize our attractor. Just a fast thing, which is just uh, a sphere in the center of our window because we set our attractor to be in the center of the world so we make it much smaller great and let's give it a color of white so we can always identify it great so this is our attractor position which we are using to um, attract the particles which is in the center of the world as you can see set to zero 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 um okay great Let's actually limit a bit still the velocity of the particles instead of max velt 0.03 let's put it to 0.02 so they cannot go so fast never great so basically now there are two main forces the gravity and the attraction let's make the wind also a bit a bit greater as a force so now particles are again moved also by the wind let's make this attractor sphere a bit smaller okay good so let's make a recap we saw in the beginning how to clamp the velocity by using the clamp function so the particles can never accelerate until they are too fast to be seen because the velocity from the previous flame is always clamped so it's not going to grow indefinitely then uh, we created a render shader which we attached to the ggl mesh this green one and we created a new parameter into it which is the input from the normal buffer which we call TF velocity, and we're using this input to change the size of the particles using the GL point size. And this fourth value for the normal buffer, we are writing it from within the transform feedback shader into the O velocity variable as the mass of our particles. So we are using the mass of our particles, which we get from the texture, the random texture, and we are assigning it to the fourth value of the O velocity variable, which is writes to the normal buffer, and then we read the normal buffer from between the render shader. Let's actually make the gravity a bit smaller and the wind also a bit smaller because otherwise it's gonna be a mess. So I hope this was uh, clear enough. If it was not clear, please uh, let me know in the comments. I know this is kind of uh, tricky stuff. And uh, in any case, we are going to use the same technique uh, multiple times in the next videos. Thank you very much for following, check my Patreon to get access to a lot of patches and uh, support the channel and see you soon in the next video, ciao!